I flopped onto the rough, scratchy carpet that stretched across my classroom. Upon descent, the back of my wrinkled shirt pulled free from my slacks, and I yanked at my tie and unbuttoned my collar, and then thought, screw it, and unbuttoned the next one, too. That was the kind of day it was. A double button opener. I stared at the metal laptop cart in front of me, a mess of tangled charger cords and computers haphazardly thrown in, with little to no regard for the numbered system. I spent at least 20 minutes at the end of each day organizing this cart. It was, for me, as a first year teacher, one of my few moments of zen. Even if I couldn't control the 120 students who sat before me throughout the day, even if I doubted every move I made, I could at least control this, this bulky, squeaky wheeled laptop cart. This heavy metal technology carrier would be organized, damn it, because I needed a win. I heard Jake walk up the ramp to the door. He was taller than me and more athletic, so the best way to describe his gait was stroll. Jake strolled everywhere, hands in his pockets, long legs covering vast distances with little effort. Jake was my co-teacher, and we shared a classroom in the back of campus. It was Jake's first year as a teacher, too, but that was pretty much all we had in common. Jake approached life with the type of laid-back, come-what-may attitude usually reserved for surfers or people who have already seen the scary movie but pretend they haven't. He even had a cool dog. The back of his shirt never came untucked. Hey, man, what are you doing? He asked. Organizing the cart, I said. Why? Just have one of the kids do it, he said. I don't think they'll do it. I don't think they'll listen to me if I ask them, I said, pulling the laptops out. Besides, it, it won't take long. Hmm. He took off his Ray-Bans. Well, that sucks. He walked over to the desk, and we shared and grabbed his stuff. I'm going to take off, man. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I said. Hey, we got uh, dancing tomorrow morning. Don't forget. He frowned. Oh, fuck, man. I hate that shit. Every Friday was Dancing Friday, when the teachers met at the front of school and we danced simple choreographed routines for the students. <laughs> I looked ridiculous every single time. I felt awkward and self-conscious because, let's be clear, I can't dance. I only do it when I absolutely have to, and my signature move is called copy the person next to me. <laughs> I didn't understand the point of it, but I went because I'm sort of a compulsive rule follower. I shrugged at Jake. I mean, it's part of the job, right? He rolled his eyes and left. It was 3.30. Teaching is both an art and a science, and I thought I had the science part down, even though I was an English teacher. I had read the books, tried to implement the strategies, and picked other teachers' brains constantly. Nothing seemed to work. Jake, on the other hand, was all art, no science. He had a natural confidence that I was jealous of, and the thought of being judged by teenagers who, as we all know, have everything 100% figured out and don't need guidance of any kind at all whatsoever, <laughs> didn't phase him. I stayed another few hours fixing the cart, charging the board, uh, changing the boards, getting prepped for Friday. Jake and I co-taught 11th grade English, and honestly, most days I was just happy that the classroom wasn't on fire. I was constantly exhausted, stressed out, wondering if I had made the right choice. I didn't know what I was doing, and I wasn't sure why I was doing it. The next day, I sat at my desk, biting a pencil, when Jake walked in. Yo, I said. Really, only single syllables are possible when you have a writing instrument as bar gag lodged in your mouth. What are you doing, he asked. I took out the spit-slicked pencil. I'm, I'm, biting, I'm biting pencils. I bit a lot of pencils. Pens, too, chomped right down on them, digging my teeth hard into the soft wood of a Ticonderoga. There wasn't a writing instrument at my desk that didn't contain an impression of my back molars. As I explained to Jake, I heard that if you bite a pencil, it tricks your muscles into making you smile. <laughs> Jesus, Jake said with a chuckle. He sat at the desk and took out his breakfast. And, and why are you doing this? Well, we're, we're supposed to smile at kids, and, and like, I don't know, I just heard like it was supposed to help you smile more or, or something. Jake rolled his eyes. That's what's wrong with this place. Like, who cares if your teacher smiles at you? It's not that big of a deal. I didn't argue. Anyway, we got to go down for the, the dancing. Jake stretched out his long frame, took a sip of juice. Nah, I'm good. 
I stopped at the door. Really? Do you have to like make copies or something? No, nope. just don't feel like it. Huh. Oh, okay then. I left, I danced, and the whole time I thought, you can just say no? <laughs> just like that. As I said, I've been a rule follower my entire life. I've never cheated on a girlfriend. I give back money when I get wrong change. And the only thing I've ever stolen was a gumball when I was nine, and I told my mom right away. So the thought of simply not doing something simply because you just didn't want to was revolutionary. And the more I thought about it, the more I saw that that was kind of Jake's MO. If he didn't want to do it, he simply didn't. He never really saw any consequences as a result. Jake showed up at 7.30 and left at 3.30. I wrote his lesson plans. He took an entire period once and taught kids how to fill out a March Madness bracket. I should have felt bitter towards his entitlement, but weirdly, I felt like I deserved it, like that he was actually the better teacher, mainly because Jake was killing it when it came to student connections. They all loved him, thought he was completely rad. Meanwhile, like, I was this like flop sweat drenched balding lump who stood in front of them and tried to get them to improve their thesis statements. <laughs> it's the ultimate irony of teaching. Everyone loves the teachers who don't really care. The thought crept in. Maybe I didn't need to spend so much extra time on campus. Maybe I didn't need to stay up late lesson planning. Maybe I should just be one of those educators who get into it for the summer break. That afternoon, I stared at that laptop cart and I wondered, what if I didn't? What if that briar patch of tangled cables and misplaced computers just stayed messed up? What if I just turned off the lights and went home? So I went home. This is going to seem like a tangent, but it isn't. You know that part in Spider-Man 3 when Peter Parker goes bad and like, he gets a really stupid emo haircut and this big budget superhero movie becomes like a Saturday Night Fever pastiche for like 15 minutes? We all remember that classic moment in American cinema. Anyway, I always thought that was one of the dumbest scenes until someone pointed out that it kind of makes sense because when a dorky dude tries to turn himself over to the dark side, it's not like he's going to know exactly how to do it. At best, he'll approximate what not caring looks like and still kind of suck at it. And that's the best way I can describe the next week or so. I tried my best to not care, but was really, really bad at it. I couldn't pull off the cool slacker vibe with any sort of honesty. I was pathetically apathetic. My connections with students actually worsened. Say what you want about teenagers, but they are bloodhounds for hypocrisy. And they knew I was Spider-Man 3-ing my way throughout the week. <laughs> Plus, I felt guilty, like I wasn't giving enough of myself to matter. I knew I didn't want to be one of those teachers that were like, think for like karmic warriors, challenging social ills or whatever, because at the end of the day, we're there to do a job and not be saints. But I had this nagging feeling that I did not want to be like Jake, or more accurately, I couldn't be like Jake. Maybe I couldn't be his type of art. I had to be my own type of art. So that come that Friday, silly as it sounds, I danced again. <laughs> Later that day, a student came up to me. Can I ask you something? Yep, I said. Do you actually like dancing? <laughs> nope. <laughs> why do you do it then? And I thought about it. For the first time ever, I thought about why I want to be a teacher. I wasn't in it for the summers off. I wasn't in it for the 3.30 dismissal. But I also wasn't in it to be a saint. I think it's just, I started and then I stopped. I can't dance. I can't slack off, but I can talk. And maybe, maybe that could be my art. Maybe I should just try to be honest. Look, I said to the kid, I remember going to school and I felt overlooked and lost and I really didn't like it at all. I probably would have thought dancing teachers were super lame, but at the same time, I always appreciated teachers who I knew were human beings, who could admit they weren't good at everything, who aren't perfect. And I guess it just shows we're just people. And if I'm willing to do something that I hate, maybe you will too, like write a thesis statement. <laughs> the kid nodded. I guess that makes sense. I looked over at my laptop cart. It hadn't been organized all week. I sighed. I walked over to it. It was a disaster. The kid came over. Do you need a hand? I smiled. No pencil required. Thank you so much.
That was Ed Farragut.